So I just want to say thank you for everyone to coming out today. today. Um, I feel it's a very big honor to be in front of some of the most compassionate people in Salt Lake that feel it's their responsibility to keep marching and standing here in solidarity on, on Workers' Day. Um, so yeah, thank you. Thank you to the organizers of this march. Um, you know, the Anarchist Black Cross, the Anarchist Social Justice, Freedom Road Social Organization, um, Socialist Organization, the uh, Green Team, and I'm sorry, anybody else I'm forgetting right now. Thank you everyone who put this march here uh, together today. Um, it is important that we all have uh, connections with one another. So that's what the, the term solidarity is all about, both on a national and an international level. If uh, we are ever going to be able to tear down these walls that divide us. Uh, the current situation that is escalating in Arizona is a very, very unsettling situation to me. I know some of you have heard me say it before, but I'm a Mexican Polish Jew. I'm a man of minority. And um, these, uh, these laws in Arizona, they're, they're just absolutely unacceptable on many levels. Arizona's SB 1070, seeming acceptance, uh, a seeming acceptance by the federal government, has a direct impact on Utah's HB 497, as well as other bills based on the work done through the American Legislative Exchange Council. Laws like, these, uh, laws like these enable the 400,000 minimum national deportation quota not only to be met, but vastly exceeded. My question is here, where, where is the documentation for where these people are ended up? Where is the documentation for where all these individuals that we have exceeded by more than 1 million per year? What is happening to all these individuals? Alabama's law currently allows us to cut off electricity to wa and water to families found to be undocumented, without consideration about health care for children, the elderly, they are simply cut off. What is the next step beyond that? Just a couple of weeks ago, we marked the 69th anniversary of the beginning of the Warsaw Ghetto Uprising on April 19, 1943. We remember the horrible atrocities of the Holocaust, alongside honoring the efforts of the resistance against the most extreme form of cultural oppression, and we memorialize them with the term, never forget. However, GSI continues to plague our world today. Darfur, Somalia, Congo, Tibet, Myanmar, Palestine, Chechnya, Mexico, and throughout countless other South American indigenous communities throughout the world that continue to be subject to pervasive international exploitation and displacement. We must ask ourselves at this point, why does oppression continue to happen? And to what extent the term never forget is actually a call to action? We must act against prejudice every shape and form. We must be prepared as individuals and as communities to stand up and resist the most pervasive economies in our world today that continue to depend on the extreme poverty for their own extreme world. And I'm sorry, ladies and gentlemen, that goes beyond just simply voting. The way minority communities, the way minority communities today are targeted, uh, or the way minority communities, specifically Poland, were targeted leading up to World War II as Germany's economy was failing, is the same paint by number language that is growing in our own community today, specifically in regards towards Mexico and so-called illegal immigration. These communities have both been both unfairly, unfairly scapegoated and systematically accused of leeching money away from our failing economy in order to shift money from, away from the real corporates, capitalism and international exploitation. This shift of blame allows those in power to maintain some semblance of order and protection for the elite while the impoverished suffer. To understand this concept is to me what it means to never forget, and I most definitely would interpret it and encourage it to be understood as a call to action. We must stand up for indigenous, immigrant, and minority communities, both locally and internationally, in solidarity with one another. We must stand up against cultural racism every step of the way. When we find that the Spanish language and books on Amer Mexican American history are being banned from institutions in southwest western states, we must actively push that education into our own communities. We must educate ourselves and each other about the rights of both undocumented and, un and documented workers. When our neighbors are being targeted by the immigration enforcement in their own homes, schools, and places of work, we must as individuals and as communities be prepared to stand up and intervene. Get your whole neighborhood to camp out on the front lawn when immigration enforcement is on the way. Be prepared to step up in a nonviolent blockade if somebody you knows is being targeted in the workplace. When a hate crime is committed, we must hold those individuals accountable, but also look at the systemic problems that enable these crimes to continue. If there are laws in place that protect those who carry out hate crimes, we must repeal them again and again and again.
We have set those mechanisms by which these lines will be able to put in place. If those in office or fail to live up to their responsibilities, fail to watch the watchmen, or abuse their powers through an organization such as the American Legislative Exchange Council in order to promote cultural racism and profit from suffering, they must amend their ways and listen to the people or be removed from office. We must educate ourselves about how capitalism and certain international economies of scale contribute to conditions that oppress people throughout the world while exploiting workers and our environment. We must tear down these walls that divide us. The way that we were able to handle, handle relationships with the most oppressed communities today is a direct sign of how we're going to be able to handle the greater problems of global sustainability coming into the future. We must stand together against these greater injustices. Furthermore, we ourselves must be aware of when our own thoughts and actions directly contribute to racism, when our own privilege perpetuates this unsustainable consumerism and international dependency upon poverty and suffering. Peace begins with one heart, one individual choosing to stand up and act in compassion, by one person stand up, standing up to break the cycle. Peace is upheld by those who actively seek it. That accumulating compassion provides the basis for the only effective check against international exploitation, and that is a people's movement. I don't believe for one moment that there is no hope for our communities, but self-awareness of ourselves and our own actions and strengths and failures, and admitting to ourselves our own current faults is the first step towards finding how to fix them. As I often remind myself from a bit of my own grandfather's wisdom, the world is a very narrow bridge, and the most important thing is never to fear. It is by solidarity through struggle that we shall all find our, find our greatest strength. Solidarity forever. <laughs>